with the heading as Gordon's model. Please uh, write in your notebooks this particular heading Gordon's model. So, we are going to learn Gordon's model exhaustively. Okay. So, first of all we talk about Gordon's model assumptions. The first assumption the expected rate of return by the shareholder that is the investor K e, will always be higher than the growth rate. Now, as of now I have not given you the formula notation by Gordon. Gradually in this class I am going to bring to that formula which was constant growth formula by the God. The constant growth formula by Gordon. So, in that particular model you would find that you determine P 0 value by taking only the upcoming dividend in the first year that is D 1 and D 1 is divided by the difference between K e minus G. So, you take the cost of equity minus the growth rate that difference becomes the denominator D 1 is the numerator. So, D 1 divided by K e minus G. Now, use your simple common sense you are taking the denominator as K e minus G. If K e minus G is the denominator imagine what would happen if K e and G both are same they both being same K e minus G will become 0 you cannot determine the value of the stock when the denominator gets 0 correct. On the other side imagine if growth rate is greater than K e, what will happen? k e minus g will become a negative value. So, to give Gordon's model complete uh, realism there are certain assumptions that are in the backing. One of the assumption is the expected rate of return by equity shareholder is always going to be greater than the growth rate and this is not just theoretical. In reality you know one thing that the shareholder as an equity investor will aspire for two things will aspire for two components one is the dividend yield and one is the growth in those dividend correct. So, dividend yield and growth taken together that is dividend yield rate and growth rate taken together becomes the required rate of return by the equity investor. So, obviously K e has to be greater than the growth rate otherwise the model cannot work and in real life also nobody can challenge this assumption. So, this particular assumption that I mentioned over here is not a theoretical assumption only it is a very very important assumption that happens in real life as well. If I take you to the second assumption it says the company distributes dividend every year. So, if you are applying Gordon's model for a company which is not distributing any dividends at all the model is not going to work. The third assumption is that the dividend grows every year and that too it grows at a constant rate that means the growth in the dividend is at a constant rate. So, keep in mind one thing this is just the one aspect of Gordon's model that we are discussing that the dividend grows at a constant rate later on you will find that uh, we are talking about concepts of super normal growth that is where dividend grows at a you know different rate a varying rate that means different rates of growth can be experienced over a period over a time horizon that is where we will introduce the two stage and three stage dividend discount model introduced by Gordon. But as of now you keep that assumption in your mind that the dividends are going to grow every year at a constant rate and the last thing see company must retain some portion of earnings because as per Gordon growth rate is a product of two components growth rate itself is a product of two components that is the return on equity that the company has a potential to generate correct the return generating capacity of the company which we call as return on equity 
multiplied by the retention ratio. Imagine if 100% dividends are distributed, what will happen? If 100% dividends are distributed, in other words, when the dividend payout ratio is 100%, the retention ratio becomes zero. That means company has no retained earnings. The retention ratio becoming zero, when you try to compute the growth rate, which I told you is a product of the return on equity and the retention ratio. If retention ratio is zero, the growth rate will become zero. If the growth rate becomes zero, I won't say you cannot apply the model. You can apply the model, but you will have to assume a scenario of zero growth. Fundamentally also, if a company is not having retention of earnings, its equity base will never enhance. If the equity base is not enhancing, where will the question of growth come for equity investor? Growth will come from some accumulation, right? For example, assume that you have $10,000 and you have invested $10,000 at 10% per annum. So beginning of the year value was $10,000. In one year time, it will become $11,000. Now the question is, how much is your earning in that cumulative value of $11,000? $1,000 is your earning, right? You may decide either to keep that money continue to be invested or you may decide to withdraw that money for your consumption. Anything can be done. You are investor, it is your money, you decide whatever you want to do. If you are withdrawing that money, then in the next year, you will again earn 10% of $10,000. But if you do not withdraw that money, then your returns will start growing. Why will your return start growing? Because your capital base got accumulation of more and more earnings. Your capital base is enlarging. That is where we talk about the source of sustainable growth rate which is a very, very important concept in your curriculum, sustainable growth rate. We are going to come across sustainable growth rate ahead. But right now itself, I would tell you that sustainable growth rate introduced by Gordon is a product of two factors. That will be the return on equity and the retention ratio. When you multiply these two factors, you get the sustainable growth rate. So let me not uh, bother you much. You have been eagerly waiting to write down these notes. Write it down quickly and then I take you ahead. All right, friends, once you have completed writing this whole thing, let us move ahead and continue writing further. The Gordon growth model assumes annual growth rate of dividend that is GC. You know, G is the symbol used for growth. And when you write GC, it is indicating that it is a case of constant growth. So further, we would say, hence, next period's dividend, that is D1, is D0 into 1 plus growth rate. And can you notice the growth rate that I am using over here is symbolized as GC, that is indicating constant growth. So. 1 plus growth rate multiplied to D0 will give you D1. And if you want to find the second year's dividend, that is D2, it will be D0 into 1 plus GC whole square and so on. Now, let me give some clarity on this so that you don't get confused at all. Imagine there is a 10% growth in dividend. So, if there is a 10% growth in dividend, what is going to happen? Dividend for the first year is suppose $1. Or I would rather say dividend for the current year that has already lapsed is $1. And the dividend is expected to grow at 10%. So what will be D1? What will be the expected dividend for the first year? So zero year dividend D0 is $1. D1 will be $1 into 1.1. Correct? When I say $1 into 1.1, it will become $1.1. Then to find the next year's expected dividend, 
I can do one thing, I can take the d1 value and to that I multiply 1 plus gc, correct. So, it is d0 into 1 plus gc giving you d1, then d1 into 1 plus gc will give you d2, but if I want to directly find d2, what will I do? d0 into 1 plus gc whole square. If I want to find fourth year dividend directly, what will I do? I will take d0 into 1 plus gc whole raise to 4 and so on, correct. So, let us continue writing this stuff. The extended equation using this assumption gives the present value of expected future dividend that is v0 as look at this every year's dividend I am adjusting with the growth rate and I am going to an infinite period at the end. Look at one thing, huh? d0 is the dividend already paid for the current year. So, the expected dividend for the first year will be d0 into 1 plus gc because this is going to be d1, I am dividing it by 1 plus ke raised to 1. This is d0 into 1 plus gc raised to 2, this will be d2 value which is divided by 1 plus ke raised to 2 we go on increasing this up to infinite period and that will give you the consolidated present value as the value of equity. Keep in mind one thing whenever your time horizon is infinite the price of the share would not come in this equation. Do not ignore that fundamental concept that is something very important. When the growth rate of dividend is constant this equation simplifies to Gordon constant growth model that will be v0 equals to d0 into 1 plus gc that is basically d1 divided by ke minus gc. The objective of mentioning g as gc indicates that it is a case of constant growth. So, quickly write up this whole thing and then I take you to some examples to clarify the same thing further. Alright friends, I am sure you have completed writing this whole thing. Let us move ahead and take up an example to have better understanding. Now, this is a small example that I have put forward on the screen. I will want you to take one minute time and solve it. In one minute time, I will expect the correct answer. I have given you one minute time, your time starts now. Alright friends, I have given you one minute time and the time is definitely over. Let us check whether your calculations were correct or not. So, in this case you have to compute d1 that will be d0 into 1 plus the constant growth rate. So, it will be dollar 1.05 and the price of the share that you expect after one year is already given. So, you just discount the dividend as well as the share price to its present value and the aggregate present value comes to dollar 12.81. So, presentation of your answer could be obviously different. You may directly put that formula correct p0 equals to d1 plus p1 divided by 1 plus ke. Just be sure that d1 was not directly informed in this question. You had to compute d1 by considering d0 multiplied by 1 plus the constant growth rate. So, write up this whole thing and uh, once you complete writing this, we will be putting an end to this session.